<laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> he falls asleep. Yeah. All right, so, uh, two minutes before eleven. Right on the dot. Oh man. Well, I appreciate you for doing this. Is this yeah, your no your first podcast? Very first. Really? No one's asked you before. You know, so all so full transparency. I have asked you before to do a podcast. Oh come on. I have. I put them on but I don't know on. if it, I don't think you got you. you probably, I'm assuming you have a secretary that reads your emails. Maybe. Probably. <laughs> she was like, mm, delete this one. <laughs> I, I did not know that, and I did not know that you asked me to do one before. How, about how long ago? Oh, man, it was a while ago. I think when I, I think I, I met you at a Dow event a long time ago. Okay. And it was right when we started doing the podcast. Okay. And uh, I have a lot of family in law enforcement oh, in, very uh, good. In, around the Austin area. So I was like, oh, it'd be cool to talk to. Yeah. Uh, so. Got, anyway, so here we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you want, just uh, you want to uh, say who you are and uh, yeah. what you do for the sure. people that don't know? Sure. So, uh like you want to, you ask me about a little background or yeah, okay. So uh, yeah, I can I can get to talking for sure. So yeah. uh, my name is Bo Stallman, uh, and I'm currently the sheriff for Brazoria County. Uh, my whole childhood, so I grew up here in Brazoria County. I actually started in Alvin, where we spent my early years, and then we moved to Angleton, um, and then I ended up graduating from Danbury High School. And I I tell people all the time that. Uh, you know, when, when I was in, in high school you, and you're trying to make that transition into life to figure out what you're going to do. And, um, you know, I was always said that, hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to go to the military. I'm going to the military. And that's just something that I felt was good for me. Well, during high school, I, m- my coach let me believe that I was gonna, kind of a decent football player. So he wanted me to explore the, op- the option of, of, of possibly playing on a college level, obviously, if, you know, a smaller school type level so that's what we did I certainly looked into that and and I'll just say the best scholarship I could find was the GI Bill so that's what I did is I, I went to the Marine Corps the United States Marine Corps and served in the Marine Corps and while in the Marine Corps I married my high school sweetheart and I say high school sweetheart I actually met her when I was in school in Angleton but I went to school in Danbury but she was still my high school sweetheart because obviously you know that we dated in high school so uh, married her moved her up to North Carolina and while while being in North Carolina, she ended up going to University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Uh, she ended up graduating from there. And upon that, we had our first child in about 2002, in May of 2002. So my EAS, which is the end of my term, was coming up there in December. So we had to make that decision of, you know, are we going to stay in the, in the military or are we going to come back home? And, and the decision was to come back home and raise our family where we were raised. As you know, the Missouri County is a great place to live. It's a great place to visit. And uh, it's a really great place to raise your family. So that's what we wanted to do. And that's why we came back home. Uh, so came back home, uh, kind of found some jobs. As I applied for DPS, I was, I was still trying to make some money, you know, cause I had a family. Um, so I, I did some odd and end things. Um, I worked for the Brazoria County Road and Bridge Department for nine months. I was I was there on the asphalt crew for a little while. Uh, uh-huh. That was quite humbling. And then uh, and upon getting accepted in, into the DPS Academy, and then w- when I got to the DPS Academy, if you don't know, it's in Austin for six months. And so you're away from your family, but you get to come home on the weekends. If you live in a an area where you can do that, I was actually in the academy with folks that, that, you know, lived in Amarillo, so they didn't go home every weekend, as you could imagine, you know, due to the commute. But uh, anyways, graduated from there, came back home to Brazoria County, and we were a trooper. I was a trooper here in Brazoria County for almost 10 years before getting accepted to the Brazoria County DA's office, and I was an investigator at the DA's office. And throughout those time frame, throughout that time frame, from DPS to the DA's office, I did use that GI Bill, and I ended up getting my master's degree in Sam Houston State University in uh, criminal justice leadership and management. So I did that uh, before being elected in 2021. We actually took office in 2021. So I uh, have three kids. Uh, I have Carolyn, Austin, and Dylan. Carolyn is 21 years old, and Austin is 18 years old, and Dylan is 16 years old. Mm-hmm. And Carolyn, she just graduated with her undergrad from Texas A&M University, um, Austin just started uh, college this last fall for his first year. 
and he's he's not cutting any corners on the college line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, and then sixteen year old Dylan, he that's my special needs guy. He's been diagnosed with IDD and autism. So, uh, and he's currently um, he doesn't live at home. So he he actually lives in a uh, in a group home. So, um, and and then my wife's an educator as well. She teaches um, at the Angleton School District in the Al- Alternative Learning Center. So, that's a uh, in a nutshell. That's kind of how we got here today, and I don't know if that's what you were asking. Yeah, but it no, probably yeah. took a whole lot longer. No, than no you it was thought, good. So. It was good. We got yeah. time. Fascinating story, um, man. Everybody I talk to have nothing but good things to say about you. And uh, just haven't talked to enough people yet. Uh, not many people I talked to. <laughs> He's only talked to me. <laughs> He's small, only asked me. It's a no. small group. <laughs> but but they're all just so drawn to you. And how, what do you? Why do you think that is? I don't know. I, I, you know, it's anytime you want to talk about me and she'll tell you, I'm not that guy, but I, I will certainly say that I would like to think that I'm, I'm, I'm a personal guy. I like to know about you. I like to know about what, what you like to do. I like to know about your family. So I, I think I'm, I'm probably just an approachable person and, and I actually do try to listen. Uh, you know, if, if someone is either just sharing things or if they have a concern or whatever it is, I, I think that's, that's kind of our strong point. So yeah. My strong point. It's a unique time in Brazoria County because it's growing so fast. Yes, sir. Are you worried about, maybe not worried is the right term, but concerned or like it's, what's kind of going through your mind with all this growth? Because I grew up in Dripping Springs and oh, okay. it was a small so town. You got to see that. As yeah, well. yeah. I grew up when there was one stoplight. Yes. Right. And it was yeah. kind of that way here for a long time, too, even like sure. eight years ago. Sure. And now all that's coming down from Houston. Yes. A lot of people just with the plants building. So what's your thoughts behind that? I mean, growth it's, is good, but it's also scary. Sure, you're sure it's a it's a real concern, and and I think it's up to us to make sure that that we have plans in place to to uh, be able to uh, to you know plan to deal with that growth. And as you know, anytime you increase numbers in anything, right, there's always going to be more concerns and more issues. So um, anytime you grow, there's growing pains that that come with it. And and actually, that you speak of that. That's really kind of our our forward thinking. That's things that we plan every day, the things that we're uh, doing assessments on, and we're trying to plan for that growth so we can assure as a sheriff's office that we're growing parallel with that growth, right? And and we're still able to provide that service and, and that safety and security, which attracts people here in the first place. So with that growth, how do we assure that we're still providing that same service and that we're still sending that same message, you know, to the people that want to do bad things and commit crimes to say this ain't the place for it. So, right. uh, so how do we do that? Right. So it, a, a lot of it is the infrastructure in place is, it's, you know, it's facilities, it's manpower. It's all those things that they all come together at one time. And we got to make sure that, as I said, that the infrastructure is in place so, so that, you know, we can build on. And I think me being the sheriff, being at an age where I, I plan to be here and see all that. I, um, I, I think that, if if you're a citizen or a voter, that's something that you should be looking into too. I plan to to experience that with you, and and to get through that and those challenges together. So uh, that is certainly a lot of things that that we talk about on a regular basis. Is hey, do we have that right foundation in place for that growth that that's gonna that's here? It's not coming. It's it's here. So yeah. uh, I, I know even as a kid that we talked about. Hey, you know this place is going to grow. It's going to grow. And, and we talked about it for a while and, and there was a void period there where I was like, hey, everybody keep talking about it. I don't see it. Well, now I see it. So it's, it's very, very, very obvious that it's here. Yeah. So. And Bazora County is so big to, to cover. Is that, um, yeah. what are some of the more challenging things you have to do every day that are, are tough and, and, and take someone like you to do like, um, some situations you have to deal with. Yeah. So, you know, our department has 400 employees, uh, and then this morning we had 902 inmates. You know that's housed in, in our facility. So there's a <clears throat> so to to really get into the array of, of of everything that the sheriff's office really does, it would surprise a lot of people to know that. Um, like you know we have a crime lab at the sheriff's office, which you know the crime lab what that means is it's not your typical. Uh, DNA analysis, crime lab, what it is is that we test for drugs and we also test for blood, for alcohol or, or drugs that are in blood. Um, so that, that's kind of, that's, that's what we do there. We also have the animal control 
um, which is the animal welfare now. And what we do there is obviously, you know, the the animal problems that we have throughout our communities is that we um, obviously respond to those and, and deal with those accordingly. We have a uh, a narcotics a drug narcotics task force. So there, there, I guess to answer your question in a nutshell is there's so many moving parts of the sheriff's office that a lot of people don't realize. Um, they don't realize that we have, uh, like I said, 900 inmates that are sitting in our county jail on any given day. Um, there's, there's just a, a lot of things in it. And I think it's kind of probably, uh, natural or, 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 or it's human nature to say, Hey, bad guys go to jail. As long as they're out of sight, out of mind, I, I don't really care what happens to them. As long as I don't have to deal with them and they're not out of here committing crimes. Well, that's our job is to deal with them. Yeah. So, so that's certainly what we do and, and we have to take care of them as well. Right. So, um, I would say every day is not the same. Every day is different. There's uh, there's always concerns. There's always uh, uh, things that arise that we take care of. So, and uh, oh, go ahead. You got something? I was gonna ask. How close do you think sheriffs are portrayed in movies? <laughs> Give me an example. Of what movie are you talking about? Man, what do you want to do? Walk and tall, or uh, they just all well, have it has this to be a movie that I know. Oh, well, and I'm not a big movie that. guy, so well, they're always uh, just uh, you know, there's a the whole term is like there's a new sheriff in town, yeah, and, yeah. and they're always <laughs> cleaning up the streets, and uh, yeah. they're always after you know, I don't know, crime, but after I mean, the bad guy. yeah, so I guess if you don't watch a lot of movies, that wouldn't be a very valid yeah. question, but I would say that the image is you know, I guess it's all relative and 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 how you view it. I would say that <clears throat> that it that the responsibilities are real. Yeah, uh, you know when it, when it when it comes to combating crime, that's my responsibility. Uh, yeah. It's it's my responsibility for all those things that you see. Um, now, as far as the the images that are portrayed, you know, you know, shoot, you're talking about movies, so um, <laughs> it's all real. Yeah. yeah. Oh, accurate. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, what a uh, oh man. So I was trying to explain to Mike what like the sheriff office is and how they collaborate with like Lake Jackson PD. Yes, very much. Probably so. got it all wrong. Can you like walk <laughs> us through like no, how your office? Uh, we really want to know who's in charge. I guess is it you or is it like Lake Jackson PD? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was kind of like in a nutshell, I was yeah. like, you're kind of the top dog in in the county, right? Like it's everything from the county's perspective. If there was a microscope or something going on, either good or bad you're going to get the the praise or the you know the fault for it right so how do i answer that that that's that's a that's a question you would think i would know very well um because a, a lot of people do have that perception but i i will say that the sheriff is responsible for that in this county right so everyone in this county can vote for me for a reason you know so if 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 i wasn't responsible for the entire county then then you know the folks that actually reside in Lake Jackson and all these other cities would not be able to vote for me is how I view it. I'm not saying that there's anything that, that actually reads that, but that's how I look at it. So, but every municipality is responsible for their jurisdiction <clears throat> as far as enforcement goes. So, <clears throat> so do, do we assist? Are we responsible? Yes. But also Lake Jackson, Angleton, Alvin, they typically take care of whatever needs that their citizens have. But we are certainly here for any type of assistance in any way, shape, or form. <clears throat> I need a water. You want some water? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can, we can get some. some. We yeah. can get some. Give me a second. Um, oh. Yeah, so back where we were yeah, is, we were. Um, yeah, like, I guess you're the, how do, how do you oh, collaborate yes. with uh, the local? Yeah, so, well, yes. Well, also, too, it's a unique job, too, because, like, the chief of police of Lake Jackson is, is, is a job. They're not voted in, right? Right. So, great question. So, that's exactly right. <clears throat> so as a sheriff, I work for the people. The people employ me. So um, as if, if you look at a municipality or a city, they're usually appointed or hired by the council um, of that city. So that, that is a big distinction between those two offices for sure. Um, but we certainly – so the way that I view the Brazoria County Sheriff's Office, we have a lot of resources. We have a lot of uh, – uh, you know, obviously the jail. So the jail, all the agencies in Brazoria County bring their prisoners to the jail. Um, if, if they're there for some time, if they have a jail at the city, they can keep them there for a short times, uh, you know, you know, depending on if they can bond out or they'll send them to the sheriff's office. So, um, that's our, our responsibility as a sheriff is to maintain a jail for the County. 
Uh, but there's also other things that we that we assist to. Uh, um, I have a crime scene unit that there's there's a lot of the smaller agencies that again they don't have those resources available. So if there's a a a crime that 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 actually needs that to happen, we show up and we certainly respond. We have a great crime scene unit, and they're uh, they're very well trained. They're very they're very well experienced too. So we get a lot of those requests from some of the other little cities. So. There's a lot of polarizing uh, viewpoints um, on cops, especially at the national level. In Texas, I feel like, uh, I don't know if you're protected is the right word, but the citizens of Texas are probably more grateful for law enforcement compared to uh, California or New York or something. Do you, like, how much how much uh, of that exists in, in Missouri County, or or do you not have to deal with that? Yeah, so I would tell you as a vast majority, Missouri County citizens, uh, this is a great place to do our profession because they appreciate us, they respect us, and they, um, they're they they're just very, very appreciative of us. So this is a great place to work in this profession, no matter for what agency. Um, they actually look for us, to, they call us, and when, when it comes like Law Enforcement Appreciation Day, we get overwhelming response from our community. And and I will tell you is it um, I want I always thank thank the citizens for that because uh, it helps me being able to employ people, but also um, it just it, it keeps that fire in your profession, you know. Because right now we're obviously like you say, there's some time times that we're under a lot of scrutiny, a lot of attack. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, it, Brazoria County has not really seen that, mm. and and I, I hope it stays that way for as long as I'm around. So. Yeah. What's the biggest thing Brazoria County has to deal with? Like if there's a problem that you th- that you wake up w- thinking about every day or go to sleep at night that's yeah. thinking what's the biggest from a crime or safety? What is the biggest problem facing Brazoria County from your perspective? So there there's not anything that I can tell you at this current moment that's just like man, this is really really bad right now. This is at, right now I can't say that, but there has been times where like the traffic that we get to the beach um, sometimes that can get out of control. I don't know if you're if you're aware of that, but sometimes our beach traffic all depend on the events that that occur out there because it's open to the public. Yeah. Uh, can we do something about like parking? Can we park facing the beach when it gets busy? No. Why do we? Why is that? Why do we got park on the other side? You have to park on the dune side parking yeah. for 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 exactly that purpose for yeah. crowd purposes and for being able to commute up and down the beach. So. If you can park on both sides of the road and there's an emergency that occurs, we can't respond because by the time that happens, it gets completely packed mm-hmm. and we cannot commute and, and we can't respond to things. And it's a it's a safety issue is what okay. it is. So that's the reason for it. So, no, do not park on the beach side. Park you, on the This dune is side. the guy that you're catching out there. <laughs> for all the listeners, <laughs> please park on the dune side I'm the when guy, you visit our beach. I'm the guy. I'm like, oh, crap, I got to be taking. I'm taking out my chair. Taking out the chair. <laughs> you're the guy fishing out the Ford, so... Ford car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you saw that truck on the back. He has a Ford yeah. too, so what would I do? I'm sorry, yeah. but I'm sure it's better. <laughs> it looked better, at least from 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 an, from an, from an eyes look. I'm sorry, I got you off track. But yeah, from a, like, for sure. Yeah, you interrupted me. So, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I think he's serious. Though. I think so. <laughs> no, serious. Well, you asked me a question. And you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Been, I'm, you sorry. Me that question? I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just saying, but I'm not. I'll rest you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, I'm just messing with you. Uh, so, yes, the beach is certainly one of those things. It, it's an attraction. A lot of people come and visit us because of our beach. Um, but it, it, it also creates some issues as well that, that, that we have to make sure that we're planning for and that, and that we're prepared for. Um, and you don't really ever know what, what type of crowd that it's going to bring, but you also have to plan for the biggest crowd and yeah. and just kind of go from there with it. So, What about the national stuff? Like, uh, what's going on at the border right now? How much right. does that affect, like, how are people coming when they're talking about immigration and, and people coming? Are they coming to Brazoria County? Are we seeing that mm-hmm. here? So that's a great question. Uh, I've actually been asked this, you know, quite often, as you could imagine. And I will tell you from any statistics and stuff that I have, um, the majority of the, of the statistics that we're going to see is in the jail. Um, but yeah, I can tell you that I haven't seen anything that's really just stuck out at this point, um, but we're certainly paying attention to those numbers to see what the effects are there. I will tell you the biggest effect in society and that that we have seen even here locally and throughout this country 
is is the fentanyl issues. Mm. Uh, there there is no doubt, hundred percent. That's where that's coming from. Um, and it's certainly affecting everywhere. There's a lot of uh, not a lot. I'm kind of loose on words there, but the point being is that that we do respond to uh, uh, overdoses. We do respond to you know DOAs. If you don't know what DOA is. Um, we, we, we respond to those and, and we have found that a lot of that is calls from the use of fentanyl. Mm. So what's happening is a lot of people are, uh, not a lot of people, again, <laughs> I keep saying that, but, but the people that, that actually want to use street drugs or, or, or pills or whatever it is, they don't, they do not realize everything has fentanyl in it. And it, and what fentanyl is, it just, it's basically a pure form of opioid and it's, it could be deadly upon a, a real, real, real minor, amount of usage of it so it, it it is a problem well drugs alone is an issue as always and uh but we're certainly combating that but fentanyl that we've seen that on on the rise here and you can certainly see it with the open border issues that we're seeing so i've i've been able to you know to kind of witness that and all law enforcement have has certainly seen the the uptick in that so those videos have you seen the videos of uh of sheriffs or cops they're pulling someone over and they're <clears throat> They have drugs on them, and they pop the trunk, and just the whiff of fentanyl will make them pass out, and they almost lost their life. Am I, am I making this up or not? I didn't know that could happen. Yeah, I, I feel no, like. I didn't either. Am I really making this up? Maybe. Were you? No. I didn't know Was that, that your car or what? So it's that certainly transdermal. Yes, I didn't. I didn't know there was an odor to fentanyl. I, I, I'm not quite sure your source here. I'd like to look into that. I'm gonna send it to you. I almost want to find it right now. Maybe but it there, was like the like dust or something. It was so. It was nose. like because it only takes a little bit to to kill you, right? Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't know that that the air that was traveled through air. Well, you're more smarter than the subject than I am. But is the video? I swear. No, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm really not. It's, it's all new to all of us. So I'm, I'm still learning I, I, as well. I, I, I want to say, I'm going to find it after the podcast yeah. now, but he opened it up. He opened the trunk up and it was, there was so much in there that he passed out and they had a, what's the thing oh, that they have well, to give him? Makes sense. Yeah. I see. Uh, F- what's the thing that the they had? Narcan. Yeah, there you go. Narcan. They had to give him Narcan yeah. on, and he Narcan. almost lost his life. I just named everything. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Snickers. Uh, <laughs> 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 He's just going through I'm the list. I'm just trying to help. <laughs> yeah. Is, is that probably the most prevalent drug? Well, I don't know if it's prevalent because it's laced with the problem is that everything's laced with it now, right? Yeah, that's that that that's kind of the trend we're seeing. Yes, uh. sir. So I wouldn't say the most prevalent. I mean, you know, meth is still on the right, cocaine, you, and I've starting we're starting to see a little more heroin again, and mm. uh, so I wouldn't say it's the most prevalent, but it's, I think it would say I would say it was the newer form that we've probably seen, or maybe that we've been able to identify. Did so? Did you hear that? Some of the Halloween candy started having it in there. I have heard of that. Yeah. yeah. How do you control that? I mean, you stop someone with a bunch of candy in the back of there. You're like, don't let your kids trick or treat. Let me check. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the answer to that. I don't, know. Be like, I don't know if you just try to find a way to drug test every piece of candy that your kid comes across or what. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Cause you can bring, I think you can bring your can- candy to the police office and they'll check it or something, but you can't check for like, some sort, you know, check for blade, razor blades or whatever, whatever we used to be worried about. Now yeah. it's this thing that's undetectable and right. uh, that small dosage can kill you. So it's. Um, I'm trying to think about other things, uh, like other podcasts I've been listening to and talking about wrongful imprisonment. Is that something that you get asked about or like how much, how much work is done? Because a lot of times, or or even being charged for the crime, does the the punishment meet the crime? Do we have that going on in Missouri County? We got people in pr- in prison that shouldn't be in prison, or maybe the crime doesn't meet the punishment. I mean, so when it comes to that, that's obviously you know it's it's a that's a different side of the justice system. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's. Uh, but I I I'll say that I will say that here in Missouri County, I feel like our judges and our jury is totally different than Harris County. Mm. I'm sure you, that you're aware of the Harris County issues and here in Brazoria County. It's another thing that we have going for us is that our, our judges take these crimes serious and, and, and they set bonds accordingly. Yeah. Um, and, and also our, um, our district attorney's office, they, they also prosecute crimes to the fullest extent as possible. So, um, and also, you know, where, you know, justice is needed. I, th- I think our DA's office does a great job on that. So, 
Yeah. So you had a you have had a nice long career. Um, what are some big wins that you had that you've you know, team identified something, were able to tackle it, and 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 cause good change? I would say, you know, there's there's not there's not one certain incident that I could say, kind of not that guy that just kind of hones on to one incident. I would say some of the the biggest accomplishments that I, that that we've made here in a short time as being the sheriff in the last three years is just building that unified team. Um, we we and we're just getting started. We're just now getting started. Where like I said, I've only took I've only been in office for three years, so. Uh, any wins that we have and things that we're able to have a positive impact on someone's life, uh, whether it be professional, um, meaning like if it's another member of the sheriff's office or if it's a constituent or a citizen that we've been able to help. I, I would say those are my biggest wins. For instance, uh, one thing that we've brought to the table since we've been on board is we've afforded the opportunity for our jail staff. So I have 170 employees that assigned to our jail division. And we've been able to afford them opportunities is what we call the cadet program. So a lot of people are 21 years of age or older. That Not a lot. Again, I keep saying that term. But uh, but er- everyone that's employed at the sheriff's office has to be 21 years of age, right? So by the time you get to the jail division, and, and that's what you want to do, and you want to go to jail, but you really want to be a law enforcement officer, but you have a family, and you're trying to make ends meet, you just you, and you don't have time to go to school because – you know, the law enforcement academy takes six months for full time school. So you don't have time for that. Well, what you can do is you can come to work to you can you can come to work at the sheriff's office, be assigned to our jail division for up to a year, and then you could be eligible to apply for the cadet program. And at that point, that's when we invest in you and we pay for your law enforcement academy with the understanding and, and also your salary, with the understanding that you're gonna be assigned straight to our patrol division upon the completion of the cadet training. So oh. Uh, I, those, those are wins for me, uh, because I, cause being able to afford someone that opportunity, uh, t- cause that's a, that's a whole life changing move there. Right. That's a, that, that's something that they will always be able to do for the rest of their life. So, um, from that leadership perspective, I will tell you, those are probably the things that, that I, I, I care about the most uh, there. Now there's always those, those crimes and those things that, that do sim but, but, I got in this because I, I, I wanted to have a positive impact on people's careers and, and, and to and to build future leaders in law enforcement for Brazoria County. And so those are the things that, that always kind of resonate with me. Yeah. So is is recruiting tough in Brazoria County? Is is there is the pool to pick yeah, from? Just a profession alone, right? Yeah. So just just a whole profession alone as we kind of briefly spoke on the scrutiny that our profession gets. So um, you know, more and more you're starting to see that pool, not there's not a whole lot of fish in that pool as there used to be, maybe. Um, but we're, I, I think that's going the other way. I, I think that is increasing a little bit from from the information that I've been able to obtain from the folks that do recruit. Uh, but it's become a lot more competitive, right? So um, a lot of these other agencies, they're they're uh, they they have incentives as far as uh, signing bonuses or or things that 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 really attract the newer generation. Um, and some of the things that we have going for us at the sheriff's office is the size of our office and the amount of how high that ceiling is. So if you get here, there's a lot of different ways that you can grow and you can be, you know, you, you can go to CID, you can be in our narcotics task force, you can become a supervisor. So we certainly have that availability that is an attraction. But w- one thing that we've also done since we've been in office is that we've increased a, a very up to a very robust training budget that we have, and w- the way the way that I view that is if I invest in you as an employee and in in training, make you better, to make you more well rounded, and to also give you knowledge that you can always keep with you. If I invest in you, I think that that is the incentive that you have to stay at the sheriff's office, right? And what everybody wins there, right? So you now have this. M- this knowledge that that you can all also utilize in your profession, but it also helps our citizens and it makes our department better. It's just a, it's just a win in all areas. So that's kind of, so when it comes to like the recruiting to answer your question in a, in a roundabout way is we have to get more creative as far as what, what the attractions are. And, 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 you know, whenever someone applies for you, 
you're basically being interviewed. You you're basically the one that 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 they're they're trying to figure out if they want to work for you or not. It's not that I want you to come work for me or not because yeah. they have a lot to pick wow. from, right? Yeah. So it's it it's kind of taking that approach on it. Who, I guess who, where do y'all get y'all's funding from? Like how do you make, um, like get possibility of getting signing bonuses or whatever or, or increasing uh, salary? Is it the state that decides it or who decides? Who 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 makes that decision? Yeah. So on the county government level. You have what what we call here in Texas is, is a commissioner's court, so that's comprised of four commissioners and one county judge, and they basically control all all of the taxpayer money that that comes into the county, uh, that has to be approved in their annual budget every year. Okay. So and every uh, enforcement agency is is fighting for that piece of that budget too, right? No, so it's just a county. So. That's the county government, and then you have the city government, which is like your city councils. Okay, they do the same thing. That they basically have the same role as 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 a county commissioner's court. Yeah, but it's just on the city level. Does that make sense? Yeah. So so you know you have the mayor, which would would kind of compare to like the county judge. Right. Then you have the councilman, which would compare to the commissioners. So essentially, if that makes sense to you, no, he doesn't get it. I don't think so. that, that, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, went right mm. through his. All sounds right. cool. You got something, Mike? Yeah, you can see it in his eyes. He didn't get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he liked that he too liked, much. He likes to make fun of you. He liked that too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've seen all your uh, your advertisements out there. Uh, you know, we work in uh, Freeport area, so oh, okay. I've seen some um, billboards, things yeah. like that. Got a nice look to you. You don't look like the type that really likes that that type of thing. I don't know if I'm, I'm looking looking at this right, but but they're all really good. But how do you feel? Yeah, about, you're good. Okay, you're really good. Like I, I, I am not that guy, but it's it's certainly necessary. Right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Do you uh, do you approve of all your uh, marketing? I do. No? I do. I do. You have like a tough look in there. So yeah. I pass. I'm going. Are you trying to say I don't right now? Or uh, <laughs> I mean, you could pick it up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. 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 Are we in his uh, county right now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right now, right now. Dang it. No, you look really good. <laughs> you look real good. You look real good. Do you not live in my county? I live here, so if this is, this the is county, his house. I forget confused sometimes. This, this is, is Mike's Harris house. County yeah. or not, but... I'm, you say what? Did, this, this is, is Mike's what? house. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, feel lives, free to do anything you want to yeah, do. Yeah. He lives either. I don't think he paid his taxes in a while, so <laughs> might want to check on that after this. <laughs> I think there's something in his truck. You probably yeah, want to yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, so you're not you're not really. It's a necessary thing, but you're you're becoming. It's, it's you know it's it's used part to it. Of it. So is it something that I like? No, it's not something I'm like. Hey, let's take a picture and put it. No, <laughs> no, I'm not that guy. Yeah. But I, I certainly understand the 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 purpose of it yeah. and 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 it's important if you're a voter for you to have for you to be able to have that opportunity to put a face to a name right like you may not know me but hey I remember that guy's name and I remember his face and I remember what he stood for that's the guy I'm going to vote for when I go to the poll so yeah. the power of billboard social media too yeah. like you have a way to connect with the community here where maybe 15 20 years ago you didn't have that possibility right you all concentrate on on social media too? Yes, sir. We sure do. How, w what what kind of stuff do y'all? Uh, we have a great campaign video. I would encourage you to go watch. Yeah. Uh, it's actually again the I say it's great because I I think it's uh I think it showcases <clears throat> what others' opinions are, not just me. Mm -hmm. You know, they're talking. We've interviewed several people throughout the community, other other elected officials that that are comprising this video. And I think if you don't know about me that this kind of gives you a good overall look about the things that we've been able to do and the things that we've done since we've been in office. So, um, so that's a good video. There's a, we try to highlight as many things as possible, but on our campaign page, uh, on the sheriff's office page, that's, that's the one that's the most exciting because on the sheriff's office page, that that's where we get to highlight all of our folks and we get to brag on our people that all the good things that they're doing, uh, for the community. And yeah. so we have certainly picked up our presence since we took office, uh, or the opportunity for the citizens to see everything that, that actually goes on in the sheriff's office. So if there was, if there was one thing that you knew that you could improve on in your, in your leadership position, what's, what's an area that you would focus in that there's a, a gap or something that someone would yeah. criticize you on? What was on me personally? Well, maybe not you personally, but just like leadership style or, 
Man, I wish Bo Stallman would be concentrate on this. What what's something that you think they would criticize you on? And would it would it would this be from a citizen or would this be from a, a member of the sheriff's office? The sheriff's office. It's a great question. And redemption wise, I don't think he has gaps. <laughs> no. Is that, is that back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. back uh? No, no, there, there's certainly gaps. Uh, I mean, I think we all got those. Yeah. Um, I, that's a great question. I, I would say I know after some conversations that we spoke even earlier today and what other people will tell you, things I could get better at is probably, um, I, and, and you may have picked up on since we've been talking, is uh, taking a little bit of more ownership instead of saying we, 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 like I did this, I did this, and, 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 and kind of uh, – that that's more of a personal thing than anything, but what anybody else would say about what I could get better at, um, I f- I don't know the answer to that. That's a weird question. That's I a guess, hard but, question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I could know tell I was you coming mine. for a job interview, but hey, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always on a job interview every day. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let you pipe in. Yeah, yeah, because you would be better. At, hey, better yet, let her because that's that's really where you're gonna get the real thing from from somebody else. Yeah, if you ask somebody else. <laughs> What I could get better at. That's what I want to know. Yeah, I want, well, maybe not, not better at, like, not coming from, like, a voter's perspective, but just, like, yeah. just, like, if there's something wrong with the, the department or something, like, you Oh, would, so the department. I thought yeah. you were talking about me personally. No, 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 Not like you. Like, if there's something, like. I swear he phrased that question about me personally. I Did know. He not? He's not good at interviewing. Yeah, so. I'm yeah. sorry. It's my first time doing this. <laughs> we're, actually, we're actually back me from too. a long holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you want to switch, hey, switch places? We can interview him. <laughs> I grill him. I, hey, I do have a lot of questions. Oh, no. I thought you do. Almost, do. It's almost time, huh? Yeah. It's almost time to wrap what it up. Huh? Yeah. May, like, maybe not from a personal perspective, but if someone was to, to criticize the department for something or the organization for something, what, like, what do you think is um, a gap at? Where could we improve? So, I, I think what I would say – um being able to have more deputies, right? So um, I would say be able to. I've heard the I've I've heard the complaint of hey I I know you're shorthanded or you don't have that much allocated staff. I would say being able to have more deputies to be able to respond, yeah, to, resources to to like emergencies quicker. Um, I, yeah, certainly it would be resources. If there's that, anything, it'd be resources. But that's an array. I could go on and on about those. That's right? such a common I, thing. I was, I was we trying to na- we, we hear that too in our in our industry is like resources, not enough people. Is no one working now, or what, what's going on? Like, why why is that such a common much. thing? I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that that j- j- just a labor and just trying to get someone to to uh, actually go to work. And it's not just our profession. I'm I, I think it's just industry. I think it's in all industries. So yeah. I would I've certainly be, heard yeah. That. I'd be worried to do what you do. It takes so much mental strength. You know, there's so many situations that most people will never go through in their life. And then you have to be quick on your feet. Um, right. right you've got to be able to assess the situation. And then you sure. got young kids going in there that don't have any of that social interaction. And uh, I imagine y'all have to take mental days and, and talk through things and get the adequate training to be able to handle situations. Yes. And I'm sure that lives on in your brain too. So yes. you might have some it does. PTSD type stuff. Yeah, that's that's funny that you actually realize that because that's a that's a thing that I don't think a lot of people understand is is that that you're training you're always training your brain for certain situations and always trying to be prepared for hey what if this what if that what if this happens and you don't really say those things out loud but you are doing these brain exercises on on how to respond because. In in a in in those situations, you may you you may have heard the term. You know, you don't have time to think, and you seriously do not have time to think. You you basically are responding to the way you've trained, and also the way you train your brain. I I, I really feel like that's that's a real thing. Yeah. Um. So yes, there's there, and and it can also be exhausting mentally as well. So, and you can, my wife can tell you the difference in my behavior and and my uh. My sleeping habits and everything else. Whenever I did get off the road and, and become into more of a administrative role, um, just the dreams that you have is ridiculous. I don't even want I'm embarrassed to even talk about them, but uh, but it it is very exactly like you said. Just the way your brain goes through those things. So it's a uh, 
hard things to talk about and and actually you know be able to explain so yeah we we hear we hear it from the the other person's perspective but we never hear it from law enforcement that much that the stuff that y'all see the dead bodies on traffic stops you know being pulled weapons being pulled on you and then you go home Mm -hmm. to your family and you're just supposed to be the family guy the wife the husband and you're supposed to be normal right and then you just got off of this crazy shift where you you did a highway chase or you saw a dead body and then you wake up, you go to sleep or you yeah. try to go to sleep. You wake up and you do it again. And you know, it, it can be tough. It, it, everyone handles those things differently. Right. So, um, and then some people are able to compartmentalize things and some people are not. And I think that's important for a leader to understand that of a, of an office to make sure that our, our mental health and the welfare of our members are the best that it can be. And, and whatever their needs are, we need to make sure that we're trying to meet those as well because of the things that they are exposed to. Right. So, so like you show up to this profession, you want, and you want to make a difference and you're doing all these good things, but you also have to, you also have to focus on yourself too, to make sure that, that you're being taken care of and you're taking care of yourself properly. So you can still, you know, take care of the citizens of our County. So um, that is something else that we've brought to the table too, is, is, is really focusing on our, our, our members and their, their physical and their mental health. So uh, that's another thing that we've done is we have, have created or we've implemented the very first Brazoria County Sheriff's Office fi- physical fitness standards. So mm-hmm. you ever heard of like a row machine? You ever seen one? Uh, yeah. It's a row machine. So that, that is our, our, our testing is, is a row machine. So um, we just now getting up with that. We're about, well, we're about 13 months into that program and it takes about 18 months from standards to actually develop what a department standard is on a VO2 scale. It's a scale, you know, based on your height, weight, and age, and uh, and then for us to create that department standard. So wow. that's one thing we're also yep. excited about. And and that's one thing that I try to convey t- to the members of the office is this is for you. This is for you and your physical fitness. And, and so you can better respond to emergencies or, or whatever that call of duty is in a in a more healthy way so so y'all are gonna test for new um for new deputies and existing deputies and there's a reoccurring testing exactly yes sir that's awesome physical fitness is so much more than physical fitness right it's i imagine you work out consistently you look like it a little bit Uh, i try to like i did this morning uh so i I can't say i'll do as much as i want to you know i'll I'll get in these slumps where I'll, I'll go really good for a long time and something will happen. And then I'll try to rationalize myself on why not to. And then I'll get back going again. And the, uh, yes, sir. That, that, the job that you're in, you, it's so much more than physical being physically fit. It's mentally fit. I think uh, if you're physically fit, then the mental part comes with it. I agree. So it's I something agree. that we're both passionate about. Really? Yeah. And that's what I get the most out of exercise is the way it affects me mentally. Right. Yeah. So like, it's, it's just your approach on things are so much more rational and so much, I don't know if that makes any sense, but, but that's what I get the most out of it. It's not, it's not necessarily my physique. It, it's really how my body feels mm-hmm. from actually doing that physical exertion. Yeah. And anyways, I, I just think you're a better person mentally whenever you're physically taking care of yourself. Agreed. So, that's so wild that there wasn't any kind of standard never, before. Never. That's wild. That's good. That, yeah. And something that's, you know, that, that's a long time coming. What I see as the older culture of your type of work would be not to really open up to each other about right. y'all, the things y'all have been through. And that's the biggest part is like getting out, like yeah. talking about it, and especially yeah. with people who have been through the same thing. Do you think that culture is starting to swing to where people are a little more open? To- yeah, I can see it. So um, what, what what we try to encourage is not necessarily open up to us, but, but to find that outlet wherever that is, right? So if, if that's what you need. We want to make that available to you. Yeah, and it's not not everybody needs to do that, and that's okay. So, I would say as a whole, as a culture, I th- I think it's not. It's certainly talked about a lot easier now as opposed to when it was more. Hey, we don't, we don't talk about that kind of deal, right? So, uh, it's certainly if 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 it's a thing, it's not you're not ostracized for having that issue anymore. And so I can I can see that culture certainly changing for sure. What other um, to where it's more accepted to have those. 
those problems, I guess. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. No, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I was. Yeah. I, was yeah. I, th- I thought it would have gotten better because yeah. before it was like, you know, suck it up kind of attitude. Like, yeah, for sure. Bring for that sure. home. And there's still some of that in this profession that, you know, you know we might all be kind of guilty of that, but at the end of the day, you have to understand that that person may not respond to things differently. And and, and I, th- I think it's certainly a more socially accepted. Yeah, I would say so. Just as a as society in general, like, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay to have those problems, and and I think a lot of it too probably has come from, you know from our veterans that we have seen that come back from war, and and we've seen the things that they've had to go through, and and uh, and not them. It, it's that's a terrible deal. I don't really want to shift into that, but I I think that has also helped us a, as a society in, in seeing that, and then us being able to adapt more, especially in our profession too. That hey, this is a real thing. Yeah, we need to address it. And we need to help, and we need to make sure that those resources are available. So, yeah. no, I completely agree. And not every person, you can't just have one standardized thing for every person, right? Like one person may require an, sure. some extra, I don't know, some TLC or be able to talk it out, right? And what another person may not have to talk it out; they can just deal with it, yeah. you know. Um, for sure. How big was it for you to start doing all this public speaking? Well, why do you ask? Because uh, it's funny. It's a conversation that we've had recent, like maybe as I, early as today. <laughs> I could either be really wrong or really right. So it's it's, it's just uh-huh. a roll of the dice. But he told You're me you're not gonna hurt my feelings uh, either way. <laughs> I don't know. That, don't say that, that I billboard, did anything. That billboard <laughs> thing might have might have ruined me here. Yeah, no. But the he I had do? mentioned a speech that you did that was really good, and I and you. You're good here. I just I, I just assume that you're a good public speaker now, but I I imagine you don't like it. I don't like it. I hate public yeah. speaking. But so uh, how do you imagine that I don't like it? Just uh, cues. Yeah, social yeah. cues. Social no, you're 100 percent right. Okay. okay. I'm uh, glad you said that because I could have looked really bad. Just <laughs> no, 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 I just like, dang, what am I putting off? Well, here? I mean, I imagine you I'm just want to do that. I'm trying to act like I want to be here and all this <laughs> other know. stuff. I love it. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> Well, I imagine you just want to get what the job doing? done, right? But then you have to do all the other stuff as the sheriff. Uh, imagine yeah. you just want to go to you know go to work, get the job, yeah, get, do. do a damn good job, and and right. go home. But no, now you right. have to do all this other stuff. Right. So that that's what I signed up for. Um, and 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 we've come a long way in four years on being able to speak. Um, I used to you know I used to get extremely extremely nervous, and I still do occasionally. I think that's natural, but not near like it was. Um, so I, th- you know, I think it comes with repetition. The more and more you do it, the more you get comfortable with it and, and the easier it comes. Uh, and it's a lot easier when I'm not talking about myself and I'm talking about our department and we're talking about things that, that we're doing as a team. So for me, that's a whole lot easier than like on the first time I was just talking about myself and why I'm, I'm the guy for the job. Well, now I get to talk about all the results and the things we've been able to do, the things we've been able to bring up to the table. So uh, so for me personally, it's certainly a lot easier now than it was, and I think for multiple reasons. I think it's off the repetition and also what the subject matter is. So, um, so yeah, it, it was. it's certainly not a comfort zone, but it, it, I think with time it's, it's become a little better for me for sure. It's got to be attractive to people too that you grew up here. You're yeah. you're you're born, you know, born went to school here. Yeah. You came back here. How did you land the job right out of the State Trooper Academy? Because you don't get to pick, right? So it's changed now. That you know that was over twenty. That was about twenty years ago. But it, it's changed where. Um, so no, I I got lucky. So you, you, it's almost like a dream sheet type deal where you can fill out all of your requests, and I think it's based off of regions or maybe it was duty stations. We picked Freeport because that was the only one that was open at the time um, here in Brazoria County. So I picked that one. There was on the, when there was only one position open. And I was only one from Brazoria County at the academy at that time. So I got lucky. Um, I got lucky to come back home. So and and it certainly has its pros and cons. You know, to be back home as a trooper um, around people that 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 you were raised around and things that you have to enforce. So uh, you know, as a new trooper, you certainly have those challenges, and, and people have to understand. Hey. I have a job to do, so. Oh, because yeah. you were probably, people were like, oh, it's just Bo, he's, yeah. he's all right, yeah. right? Yeah. Were you put in those situations where uh, you had to? You know, <laughs> I, I think from time to time that you may see some things, but there may be some expectations that people may have because they know you. But, uh, um, no, nah, I've never really been in those situations too much. Is there a, a time, an incident that happened when you were a state trooper that you tell people that's impacted you in the way you conduct and believe in law enforcement or? Something that's stayed with you? Is there an incident that, that occurred? That stayed with me, like uh, would, it, would it maybe that something that I've seen? Or impacted the, you that, 
that you've shared before publicly? I'm sure you have a lot, but no, something not that, that I've shared publicly. No, well, that's what no, I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know if there's something that you could share. No, I mean, there's, I mean, there's so many different aspects of it. You know, whenever you, uh, you know, a lot of the crash investigations that we do there, and the impact that you see that it makes on the family. I'll tell you, probably one of the hardest things, and it's one of the smallest things that we did was making death notifications. Um, as you could imagine, like it, it's not a big part of the job and it doesn't take very long, but it's probably one of the most important, probably the worst part of the job. What, what does that involve? Making death notifications. So, um, if, if, if you're working a crash and, and there is a deceased involved, you have to go notify the family. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so somebody has to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that's probably that's probably one of the toughest things, and I probably remember every one of those, and I've done several, and I remember them all the way to the T. And no matter how many times that you've done it, it's like the first time. It's, and it's, you can still hear the scratch in your voice. You can still hear it. So th- those are th- those are extremely tough, and, and I do remember those things. Uh, so everything I probably remember is probably not real positive. It's the things that – and that's, that's, the, that's the nature of our profession in the first place. So, um, And that's one thing – kind of switching gears here on but uh but speaking on on the negativity and the things that we do see from you know law enforcement perspective is it's really important for a leader of an agency now to always try to always try to bring out the positive things that we can whenever we can because everything that we do is negative in nature people don't call us to come and have a party right they call us because something's going wrong and and they need us to come help so it's important for us as as leadership to be as positive as we can and to always highlight those positive things in someone's career as much as we can because of the negativity and just the just the nature of the profession. I don't know if you're comfortable talking about it, but I think I heard that you were doing positive things towards uh, autism. Autism. So mm-hmm. yeah, I would love to talk about that. No, okay. that's, that's in my wheelhouse. I right just there. I yeah, we can okay. talk. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so as I told you that my son. Um, He's been diagnosed with IDD and autism, um, and he has a lot of behavioral issues and things of that nature. So, um, but he also elopes, which means that he does leave if if he if he gets loose, he can run and take off. Well, so this program that that we've created is called the CARES program, um, and what this is is where our citizens can voluntarily give us information because of all the HIPAA stuff. So they can they can voluntarily give us information based on their loved one, whether it be a child or, or whether it be an elderly or um, somebody that may suffer from Alzheimer's or dementia um, or schizophrenia, whatever that is, what, what, whatever uh, disability or whatever uh, special need that that loved one has, we want to afford them the opportunity to voluntarily give us this information uh, along with a photograph attached. And what this does is this, better, this helps us better serve our people, right, our citizens of our county. Because if if there's something that may alert you or 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 if you may um, if they have a, a trigger or something that they have that they may respond negative ne- negative negatively to or um, or maybe become aggressive or if they get scared, we, we want to know about those things. If it's shiny lights or if it's raised voices or um, whatever that we can do to respond to the to a situation to make sure that we don't escalate it, but we try to de-escalate the situation. That's the information that's very vital to us when, when they're responding to an emergency. So um, that's the purpose of it. And also what it helps us do, if you if you do send in the photograph along with it, we, um, we can identify this person a lot sooner, a lot quicker, because it's in our, our CAD system. So when they respond to the call, we can look at this information and we can review it briefly or – you know, dispatch can convey it to us if we have to respond at a at a high rate of speed or whatnot. So, um, so basically, yeah, having this information, and if I can have a picture, and if my kid is roaming around, but if I'm responding to it, I know the kid is lost, and we're looking for him. Or if the um, if the elderly person is somewhere, I at least know what he looks like because sometimes these kids too are nonverbal, right? So I can say, "Hey, what's your name?" and they might have the Echolilia, and they say, hey, what's your name? And you're like, no, I asked you what's your name. So they can't really speak, and they can't carry on a dialogue or a conversation, so it would help for me to be able to identify this person that we're looking for as I'm responding. So if I have a photograph, it will certainly help 
help you know make those identification purposes. So so that's the purpose of CARES is basically us us responding to emergencies safely. So um I I think it's it's been a great program and and, and we're still in the in the middle of trying to figure out how we can interface and share this information with other responding agencies as as, as we spoke about earlier with you know, like the difference between city and county, if we can share this information <clears throat> with with other law enforcement agencies that also respond to emergencies too. So So that's specific uh, to Brazoria County? It, it's just specific to the Sheriff's Office. Yes. Sheriff's Office. Okay. Yeah. It, for for now, but we're certainly looking into expanding that information, being able to share that information with the consent you, of the people providing it as well. I've read you've done some work too on the state level for funding to help families that have kids with autism. I don't know who your sources are, but they're pretty good. <laughs> uh, so yes, yes, we we've certainly have 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 been to the state legislature and testified for Brazoria County for the resources and 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 to bring resources here to to Brazoria County to help us with this mental health crisis. Yeah, very passionate about mental health. I also serve on our, uh, if you know what a LMHA is, but it, it it's our local mental health authority. Okay. Every county has one assigned to them. There's 39 in the state, and ours covers Brazoria and Galveston County. And I actually serve on the on the board of directors there. As you can imagine, the the uh, type of hats that I wear on that kind of thing because of, of the personal thing, and also as well as the jail, and and the context that we have with the community. So. Um, m- mental health is a real thing. It's it's a real issue. Um, it's a real concern, and there are certain approaches and things that we need to make sure that we're doing yeah. towards it as a community and as a law enforcement agency. Yeah. Well, Sheriff Tomlin, <laughs> I appreciate your time, and I want to be respectful of it. I yeah, you got places it. to go, people to arrest, like Mike. So I'm gonna run. <laughs> so, I'm gonna run as soon as I get off here. So you know, as as a law enforcement officer, I, and it's it's just my turn to ask questions real quick. Okay. No. Okay. So so you said that that you work in Freeport. Uh-huh. Where's that at? Well, we try not to say it, but we work for <laughs> uh, a large chemical company yeah. whose logo is red. Oh, okay. And it's it's got like certain they got like three letters on it. Yeah, <laughs> it's in the shape of a diamond. Yeah. Uh-huh. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. All right. So. And what profession or what, what kind of trade or what, what do y'all do for a, that well, chemical company? Did you go first? I work uh, in maintenance. Okay. And I'm in IT. Oh, okay. Uh, You're one of those guys. I'm one of those guys, but you need me, though. It was very, yeah. I have no idea guy. what he's doing. Uh, I'm just guessing. Just, just shooting at the hip. Shuffle <laughs> them somewhere. <laughs> no, no, they're very much needed. But, you know, th- you know, they're always smarter than everybody, too, you know. So. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's not wrong. Hey, hey, he's not wrong, is he? <laughs> I mean, am I right? <laughs> no, I, 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 that's factual information. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. I, I, was, I was just curious. You know, you said down in Freeport, and I was just curious. Yeah, we were. Are you from Brazoria County, or are both y'all here? Like, yeah, from Brazoria County. I grew up in Clute, and I grew up in German Springs. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. You said that earlier. We live in Angleton now. Live in Angleton. Yeah. Okay, so you grew up in Clute, and you went yeah. to high school in Brazoria, I guess. Okay, yeah. I went to West Columbia for a little while, yeah, and then uh, and then moved over to Brazoria. So good deal. Yeah, been in your been in your territory for yeah, a little while. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, good deal. And and you decided to move up here to kind of. You like to, I mean, because cause you're not down. My girlfriend in works the LBC in Houston anymore. So. Yeah, my girlfriend works in Houston, thirty minutes, and then I drive thirty minutes. Okay, so it's a yeah. halfway point for us. That's good. Yeah, very good. It's a nice community. How, how long is this community? It's not very old. It's, yeah, it's it's pretty new. Yeah. Uh, but it's like five, five six years. years yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty, pretty good. Know your area. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I just started to see all the rooftops come up, and I, I remember this area was about five or six years ago. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they're starting to build the all these overpasses yeah. and uh, to to account for all the people. I mean, just mm-hmm. getting out of this neighborhood in the morning is getting ridiculous. So really, you oh. can do something. Well, about yeah. <laughs> a lot of that is from the construction, though, is it not? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to get better. It's just yeah. we're growing so fast uh, that the construction can't keep. Is up. this considered an Iowa colony? Hmm? Yeah. They're trying to make it that, but you know. can't get nothing Why shipped did the over here. Say Arcola on it. It says Arcola, Rocheron, and Iowa colony. And the only They're way you get here to GPS, I think, is. Arcola. Arcola. Yeah. yeah. And then if you want okay. an Amazon package, put Rocheron. It's a whole oh, thing, man. Wow. They're That's trying to mess. make an Iowa colony so bad, but it yeah. it doesn't register that really. Is well, this in Brazoria County? Yeah, I think so. This I is Brazoria is County. In the, in, is it, I think it is in Brazoria County, but I'm sure it'll be annexed for long. Oh. Okay. Because cause like the city of Iowa colony is not, well, it, it's it's really close to here. So I don't know. I don't know. Where is Iowa colony? What is? I don't even know what that is. I don't know. 
You know, what it is? It's, it's where, a city. I know, but where, though? I, 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 don't, I don't know where We're it's here at. right now. You <laughs> 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 like that? You like that? All right. I don't know where it's at. Regardless. You'll yeah. be mine regardless. Yeah. So. Buddy. Yeah. We're going to need some more coverage over here. <laughs> Yeah, you got yeah. this guy bothering me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I live in the good uh, town of Angleton, though. So yeah. nice, a good so. deal. Well, I appreciate sharing the information with me. Yeah. yeah so yeah. on to the next topic. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Lic- <laughs> license <and> registration. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, we had fun. We yeah, appreciate thank it. You. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank for you for having me. I really appreciate. it. I'm all getting. So you said yeah. it was going to happen. It was going to happen. Yeah. 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 What you put in the water? When we were talking. <laughs> oh, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> Well, thank no, you. I certainly appreciate you having us, and thank you for the opportunity. So, and I would obviously like to earn your vote and your support in this upcoming election. Absolutely, so, okay. yes, sir. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. When when's the last but, day to but vote? You have to vote on the Republican primary, so I don't I don't know where you fall on that, but that's where I'll be. So. Okay. When's the last day to vote? Uh, March fifth is election day. Okay. For the for the primary voting, and then you have a general election. Do y- y- y'all understand how all that works? Because I, I don't I don't want to insult your intelligence, but there's just a lot of people who don't pay attention. They don't really know. I thought. I thought it, the election's in November. Well, yes, there it is, but there's also one in March. So if yeah. you guys if you guys get all that, no, well, right. feel free to say it that way in case people no, don't. Yeah. Know. So so basically, there's a primary election uh, that happens prior to the general election, and and it's going it will go on in Texas from February 20th to March 5th. So the early voting is the 20th through whatever that su- Saturday is, and then election day would be on the 5th. Okay. And uh, so and then after the party select what their candidates are, then the Democrat, either Democrats or uh, independents or um, Republicans, they will be all on the ballot together in November. That's what they call the general election. All right. Well, good deal. We appreciate well, it. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Yeah, that was fine. I really appreciate it. It's my first time, so you always you did be, good. You always be my first podcast. Oh, I did, you did good. We'll have to have you back, man. We'll have to have you back. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye.